Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Magic the Gathering Arena. Uh, today we're playing some Abzan Greasefang, uh, this deck list here, and we're just going to jump into some games. And this is uh, best of three explorer gameplay, so. We're just hoping for some uh, good games. been very busy these past couple of weeks so not had a lot of time to play or record so we'll see we'll see all right uh we're missing white but we also don't have the the hit in hand, so I guess that's fine. So our, li our line with this hand, excuse me, um, is going to be like turn to salvage into hopefully white source into grease fang. So let's play, let's run out this blooming marsh. So there's a debate as to doing it now because they are showing uh, blue-white. They could be, with Yorian, it's probably the enchantments deck, though it could still be like blue-white control. So I'm just going to, I am going to pass here. It could be that this is wrong and that we should be like just salvaging on our turn. Okay, it's the enchantments deck. Um, there is no, like, there isn't really a four-color control deck right now like that, so I guess, well, I guess we'll take a Grease Fang. Hope for a white source off the top. That's a white source. Grease Fang. Oh, man, of Dusty. Yeah, this deck, this is my first time playing, like, a, a Grease Fang deck. I've, I've just not had the time or... And crew, like that. And we have another chariot in our graveyard, so this is this is dumb. This is this is real dumb. I mean We could try to kill them here. Um by trying to hit with this Takanuma. Right, so six, yeah. Um, I think that's what we're gonna try and do. We're gonna cite we're gonna cycle this Takanuma. Or channel this Takanuma. No. Nope. No hit. Oh well. Oh, they were dead anyway. I suck at math. I, I just... Alright. So, against this deck, they're likely to bring in... Graveyard Hate. Because we just owned them out of the graveyard. Um... I'm not sure what we want to do against them. Because we have, like... So assassins. So fatal push is probably not great. It hits their three drops if we have revolt, but they're usually playing like it's usually mostly three drops. So we have to we have to have revolt for that to be any good. So fate that's probably not good. Let's bring in the assassins trophies because that can help 
deal with whatever they've got going on. Um, they might have like rips. I think I'm okay with like just the trophies for now. Because I don't think we have to like we could bring in duress, but like there are, they also have creature based stuff that we might want to hit with the thought seize with a discard spell. Um they're not I mean they have ECD usually, they have Elspeth Conqueror's Death usually, but they're not like a heavily graveyard based deck. Um Their trick right now is usually just getting is is leyline binding into like titan of industry or some other giant seven drop that's that's ridiculous i think i think we're just gonna run with the assassin's trophies for now and then like if we see something else that we would want to bring in we'll bring that in but like just cutting the fatal pushes for the assassin's trophies right now seems fine this is an unplayable hand This is a playable hand. Um, I'm going to put back this can't stay away. And we're going to wind up playing like a Golgari midrange deck, which is kind of funny. Blooming Marsh. Thought Seas. Oh, they've got double rep. Do we just take the Trespasser and like play this like mid -range, like a midrange game? I think we I think we do that. Like, we couldn't, we can't take both rips, is the logic. So, taking a rip effectively does nothing, whereas, like, taking the Trespasser is one less threat that we actually have to deal with. Cool. Um, let's get some women marched down while we still can. So Liliana comes down, they just binding it. Provided they draw a land. That is the key point there. They are a Yuri index, so that's inconsistent. Graveyard Trespasser comes down, they binding it. They probably have a land. But they pitched their third card, whatever it was. Which is so it's it's like it seems like Lily so Lily I think is better because if they don't draw a land, Lily is a fight? And you think you can win you won't be outsmarting me. So yeah, they have to draw a land in order to Pop off with this. Let's go. Thought sees you. I mean, we're getting both of these, so it doesn't really matter what we pick. Drop it. We're not going to take up here because it doesn't. It, it's strictly. Well, it puts us at ult next turn, but both of the cards in our hand are, are reasonable keeps and will probably deal with anything that they play. This effectively has hexproof, but better because they can make the mistake of targeting it.
They could buy Yorian and pat out their hand with this extra card. Nope, they're just going to play the land. All right. Um, so it actually doesn't look like we're going to draw white anytime soon. I'm going to put this Lily on ultimate. With Witherbloom Command and Assassin's Trophy up, I, I think putting it on alt next turn is you won't be outsmarting me correct So we can ult the Lily, split them 50-50, and then command, kill, a, kill the remaining rip. Let's do the attack first. Which puts them on not casting Yorian for a while. Or we can take up Lily, pitch this trophy, yeah. Alt them next turn. I'm tired of your secrets. All right. Um. One way or another, this oh, God. is over for you. That's a swamp, right? Yeah. So they keep four shitty lands and a rip, or they keep... Four sheet of lands and two rips, or... No. Yeah, four sheet of lands and... Like this, yeah. Four sheet of lands and a rip, or three good lands and a rip. Yeah, anything they lay on binding. Well, I mean, they could... They actually were living there. They were alive. So if they eat... No, they were dead. They were dead because of the card in our hand, though. They didn't know they were dead. So they lay line binding. They eat one of the cats. We can't crew the chariot and attack with the trespasser next turn. So we'd have to find another source of damage. Granted, it doesn't look right. Um, like if you were, if you were not at eight, and facing down lethal, you would want to eat the chariot or the Liliana. But in this case, like if they leyline binding, eat the cat, they're okay. Barring us having exactly 
with a bloom command in hand, like a drain in hand. Or, well, I guess we're a creature. And again. So this deck doesn't seem, you know, terrible. We have to face it off against like something that can handle us on the front end. This seems good. This seems fine. But that can't stay away. It does feel like we are light on white sources. Spirits. Okay. So this is a complicated one. What do we take here? Do we just take the Mausoleum Wanderer? Take one of their creatures. We're never going to be able to two for one them for this curious obsession. Like, they're going to hold up protection. So, I'm going to take the Mausoleum Wanderer. They will probably blue source hold up Spectral Sailor. Which means we play our green source and don't do anything until the end step, at which point they play the Sailor. We push it. Or command it. What? Well, it's on green. Uh, I'm gonna go for Witherbloom command. So, provided they don't have another one drop spirit. So target me, target the spirit. Oh, crap. I was hoping for a land off that, but hey, we got us through three non-lands, so something accomplished. Basically, against spirits, we have to not get greedy. Um, we have to play... Oh, I hate that. <laughs> Sorry, the, their card back plays a sound, which is annoying. Um, so here, they can run out the Malevolent Hermit, but then I have Fatal Push for it. And they Now, they don't know that, but they can probably assume that we have a removal spell. Based on the fact that we commanded their Sailor very, very quickly and took the other one drop spirit they didn't even play a land what um here we're gonna thought seize them we're gonna see what they've got well they've got them 11 hermit and that's about it here they should have played a land last turn like they're still in this if we don't have another removal spell but we do so They should have at least played the land. So we take the Malevolent Hermit. Yes, the mill was great, but we're missing lands, so... They're not dead. It feels like this is sort of tilt tier. Um, you know, I know that I tilt out a lot in in magic so it feels like this is tilt tier where people who are reasonably good but tilt too much uh, come to play
it also feels like you know personally I'm All right. Well, our entire hand is unplayable unless we draw a white source. Right? And even then, we could play a card. Well, actually, we have Fatal Push. So, if our opponent has been had been just, like, playing lands here, they'd be fine. But they either they are I think they like they disconnected or alt F for it or something. I mean they also not that it mattered, but misplayed. They should have held their sailor until my end step. Like with the bloom commands a sorcery. So if they hold it until my end step. Yep. That's the match. But yeah, if they hold it until my end step, then I have to push it, and I can't just command it, and then they... I mean, the sequence still works out poorly for them, just because we have two removal spells, and... on time, right? So, I'm going to go to a game three showcase what this deck does against an opponent who actually plays um another 92 percenter all right well uh one lander it's not a black land so we definitely have to mulligan this okay this is actually pretty good um We are going to keep, we have to keep the lands. So the question is, which of these cards is going to be least useful? Honestly, it's probably the Parhelion. We don't have a way to specifically discard that. I mean, we could thought seize ourselves, but then we'll be putting Witherbloom Command back, and I don't particularly fancy that. So I think we are going to put the Parhelion. Parhelion back. We could put the second Thoughtseize back. That's the debate, I guess, is, is Parhelion or second Thoughtseize. With all our self-mill, though, I think we'll be okay like this. We just lead on this thing. Thoughtseize you. Uh, mono green. Mono green, mono green. So there's a couple of options. We can take Love Struck Beast. Which is what I'm leaning towards right now. Scavenger News is also a pain in the butt. Actually, Skews might just be worse for us. It might be... Because we can kill the 1-1 one -one with the command... We can take Scooze next turn. We can take Scooze with the second Thought Seize. So we'll take the Love Struck Beast here. Yeah, we'll take the Love Struck Beast here. We'll uh, play this Temple Garden tapped next turn and take the Scooze. Oh, they drew a land. They drew a third land, which is not good for us because this Captain Doom Mammoth doesn't have to be be played as a land now, but we have to take the Scoos here. They played the Mammoth as a land. Okay. Uh, trying to think. I don't think we have any double pips on any cards. So the question is, I guess. Well, okay, so if we play this on black, we can Thought Seize and Command. What do 
what is command doing in that case? Like a drain and mill? Take Coco here, right? Yeah. It's just a land. I guess, yeah. Target me, target you. Parhelion in the bin. There we go. Grease Fang. Parhelion. Oh, f I f fucked that up. Wonderful. Yep. Cool. You have to crew it. Oh my god. How am I so stupid? Actually, we can guarantee that there's a land by doing this first. Alright, we might be able to salvage this. This is... I think we might just be dead here though so wherever we wherever we block we're blocking two because they have ronus so this is five six seven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen so we do have to block This doesn't kill them. If we hadn't screwed that up, we might have won. Might have. Okay. But, um... Bring us the fatal pushes. We don't really want it to go long against them. We really just want to combo and go. So our sort of mid rangey stuff is just not useful. We're bringing in Assassin's Trophy. Just a, a horrendous punt, you know, passing. Th just And that's a, a thing that only happens in digital magic, right? Because it's hardcore to the rules. 
I guess, I guess, like, if you said, like, pass, <laughs> um, by accident, you know, you'd be in a similar situation. I will not pay the two. So, we have two options here. We can either informant or command that elf. Informant guarantees that we put the Parhelion in the graveyard. Command is, is more likely to like, get us a land, right? Target ourselves. Target the elf. Nope. Okay. I'm definitely happy that I did that, though. That's a hearse. We just have to flood the... I mean, we, we need to land here, so that's what we're doing. Um, and that's also a reason not to play the command and play the informant instead. So we would like to find another Witherbloom command, because that'll answer the hearse. Nope, never mind. Push your skews. Skews eat something. They made a mistake on what they ate with the hearse, though. Eating both creatures is... Like, what are we going to do? Reanimate one of them? No. I'm not going to spend my reanimation like that desperately. Uh, I want to pitch. I can't stay away here. We're going to be. We're being put on like a fair game plan by this hearse. And the fact that I commanded too early. And I like hate to focus on it, but it's the only thing they, they have that they're doing, which is just a testament to how far cards have come. How far uh, from, um, you know, where we've been in the past. Right? In the past, you got a 2-2 two -two creature that you had to pay a blue and you ate one card. And if, or you had to pay a green and you ate one card. And if it was a creature, you gained a life and put a counter on it. Okay? Now we get something that is an artifact that you don't gain life, but it always grows. And it eats two cards. This Outland Liberator is a problem as well, right? So they can crack that to kill the chariot, but we get the two cats, so. I'm not super... Like, I want them to cash that in. I want them to spend their cards, because I need them to spend their cards. I will friggin' triple block that. I will not block it at all. I'm 
to take your last card, whatever it is. Playing can't stay away here is pointless. It literally just gets its target eaten by this stupid hearse. Decades ago, or not decades ago, but just years ago, now. This is an 8-8. Eight eight. It's not a creature unless they want it to be. Yeah, we still just have to hit, have to sit here. And they have plenty to eat to make that ooze bigger than our cats. So we're taking 10 next turn. If they want to. Potentially more. Don't misplay your first games. Don't do it. They don't have three lands, so it's not lethal. It's just very close. Actually, no. No, it's it's not lethal. Again, it's just very close. We just have to double chump. What is our out here? Well, they could be assuming we have a fatal... No, they couldn't be. There's no way. There's absolutely no way we would not have fatal pushed before this point. So... They're just being super conservative for no reason. Um, we do not have to block here. Like, there is no out for us, but... That's definitely not it. And that's what happens when you run into main deck graveyard hate plus sideboard graveyard hate. Plus removal spell. So yeah, um, I think we could have taken a game off them. We would have gotten wrecked in game two because of my miss my my play. Um, but yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed that. You know, you get sort of two games. Not the the spirits game didn't really count, right? They didn't really play it. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and. Uh, See you next time. All right? Thanks.